fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high of silver. The Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal that's ready to eat, Betty Crocker mixes, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions. Present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Sometimes you just don't realize what a good buddy one of your friends is until he's away for a while. Maybe he's home from school with a cold or something. You look at his empty desk in class and, gee, you really miss him. Well, here's something real nice you can do for him. Take over a big, cheery Betty Crocker yellow cake. The kind that says, hurry back soon, we think you're great. A cake like this, of course, just has to be perfect. And you can be sure it will be when it's made with Betty Crocker's yellow cake mix. Your mom will love to bake it. Or you can be a chef and bake it yourself. Any guy can turn out a perfect cake with this mix. All the special things are right in the package. You just add water and two fresh eggs for a perfect cake every time you bake. Cake after cake after cake. It's guaranteed perfect by Betty Crocker of General Mills, Minneapolis. And wait till he tastes that first slice. Mmm, a real He-Man every crumbs delectable Betty Crocker yellow cake. Bake one. It's fun. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you Silver? Hooray! A hard-faced man had made camp in a valley a hundred miles north of Santa Fe. He had been there for several days, marking time until the 15th of the month. And when that day arrived, he marked the passage of the hours till noon. Then he packed his gear, saddled his horse, mounted, and glanced frequently at his watch while he rode toward the telegraph office at a station called Bethany. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on. It was less than two minutes before 1 p.m. when he dismounted and entered the small building. You, mister, got to send a telegram to Batesville right away. Sit down, mister. I'll be with you as soon as I finish copying these dispatches. Hmm. One o'clock. <laughs> it's right on time. The man who called himself a marshal left the telegraph office and rode away. His part in one of Scar Grayson's carefully planned raids was done. Toto, the friend of the Lone Ranger, was in Batesville when the message arrived. He saw the telegraph operator rush across the street, waving a piece of paper and shouting to Sheriff Bart Collier. The lawman had been sitting in the shade in front of his office. I've just got word that Scar Grayson's gang is heading this way. Scar Grayson. Mention of the outlaw's name brought a murmur from half a dozen men who had been lounging nearby. Give me that message. It's from Marshal Holly. Marshal Wild Bill Holly. I can read. Boys, Bill Holly's got some inside information. The Grayson Wolf Pack is heading this way to hide out in the Last Chance Hills. That means we're going manhunting. It means posse duty for every man in town who can ride a horse and pack a gun. Within 15 minutes, every able-bodied man in Batesville had assembled in front of the sheriff's office, ready to ride north to meet Grayson and his outlaws before they could go into hiding in the hills. All ready, boys? Yes, All right. Come on, then. Let's get going. Come on. Come on. The posse dashed away toward the north. Toto watched them go. Then he stepped quickly between the buildings to the side of his pink horse, which had been left at ground hitch in the rear of the general store. Mounting quickly, he rode away. Get him up! Out! In Batesville, there were left only women and children, and men too old to ride and shoot. Get 
Ten minutes after the posse had raced north out of Faithville, a band of horsemen came leisurely in from the south. The men riding these horses kept their hands close to their gun butts, and every man kept his eyes alert, looking for trouble. And at the head of the party, the outlaw Scar Grayson said briefly, Looks like Mac did a good job sending that telegram. I bet there's not a man in town strong enough to lift a gun. All right, now let's go. Right. Hit it, horrible. Hit it, go on. The looting of Batesville was accomplished in short order, and the outlaws were gone, leaving several townspeople dead and wounded. A few miles to the west, Tottle was telling the Lone Ranger what he had seen and heard in town. The masked man quickly saddled Silver as he listened to the story. Then me watch to Lawman right out of town. Then head north. Tonto, you said the message came from Marshal Holly? That's right. From the town of Benton? Ah. That's about 75 miles north of here. That's right. Something's wrong. What's the matter? I happen to know Marshal Holly's in Santa Fe. Oh. That south of here? Yes. That message might have been sent by one of Grayson's men. Why do that? To get the sheriff and all able-bodied men out of Batesville. Make the town easy to attack. So go there and see what's going on. Easy, steady, go. In Batesville, the street was deserted, and the windows and buildings on both sides were shattered by gunfire. In the telegraph office, the Lone Ranger found the operator trying to bandage his own right arm. Here, let me finish that bandage for you. While he dressed the wound, the Lone Ranger won the confidence of the telegraph operator and learned that Grayson's men had done a thorough job of looting the town. Wounded are being taken care of by the doctor. I sent a report to Marshal Holly. You sent that report to Benton? Yep, that's where his message came from. The man who sent that message was an imposter. Marshal Holly from Santa Fe. Get word to him there. In Santa Fe? Yes. Get word to him while I see if I can find the trail of Grayson's gang. When the sheriff returns, give him this bullet. Tell him Tonto and I were here and ask him to wait until we find the trail. Tell him we report to him. This bullet? It's made of silver. Now, Tonto, you ride toward the Thunder Mountains and look for tracks. I'll head east. Huh? Hey, mister. Yes. Will this silver bullet mean anything to Sheriff Carter? I hope so. I think it's south now. All right, on your way, Tonto. City big bullet. In silver. signaled a halt in the foothills near Thunder Mountain. It was less than an hour since the outlaws had terrorized and robbed the small cattle. Now, oh, 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 oh. oh, boys, this is where we're tied company. Before the sheriff gets on our trail. Yeah. I'll bet he'll be one surprised hombre when he gets home, huh? He'll be more surprised when he starts following our tracks. Now, here's what we're going to do. Separate here and stay in Paris. You fellas all remember where we holed up last winter. The other side of Thunder Mountain? Yeah, sure, yeah. Right. That's where we'll get together tomorrow morning. We're about to split some of that money, sir. The loot stays with me and Speed. We're pairing off together. We'll meet and divide later, like I said. But if the law should catch up with you and Speed, they get the whole works back. And if we get our share now... All right, Dusty, I'll give you your share. Oh! Any of the rest of you want your share now? Or would you rather take orders like you've been doing? All right. Pair off and get going. The sheriff's going to be downright discouraged following one trail after another. Now get going! Outlaws had made no effort to conceal the tracks of their horses after leaving town. Tuttle followed these without difficulty into the foothills until he reached the place where the gang had stopped. Here he saw the gang had broken up. Pairs of tracks radiated from the place in all directions. The Indian discovered something else. A dead man sprawled on the ground. Oh. He examined the body and made a startling discovery. 
Hastily, he gathered dry wood and built a signal fire. Grayson and Speed rode side by side. The leader turned frequently to look over his shoulder. What's the matter, Scar? You think we're being followed? Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, hold oh, on. Oh, hold on. Oh, oh, oh. Look back there, Speed. See that column of smoke? Yeah. Notice how it's raised and straight, but how there's breaks in it? Sort of like an engine smoke signal. That's just what it is. It's right near the place where we left Dusty. What do you make of it, boss? I don't know. But we're going to ride back there and investigate. Come on. Get it. Get it. Get it. Tuttle had finished sending his smoke signals and had rolled up the blanket he had used. He was just about to place it on Scout's back when Scar and Speed stepped from behind a rock with guns held ready. Get him up, Redskin. Huh? You. Get him up and keep him there. Or you'll get a sudden ticket to the happy hunting ground. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. When Bill's up fast, the kids all shout, you can't strike that slugger out. He gets the hit because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. <laughs> he's feeling his Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. Sure, Cheerios, the cereal that's fun to eat because it's shaped like little letter O's. The only ready-to-eat oat cereal with this fresh toasted oat flavor. And listen, every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. Yes, Cheerios is made to give you real go power. So every morning, get going and keep going with Cheerios. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. Now to continue. Scar Grayson and his henchman called Speed caught Toto sending smoke signals. Toto recognized the outlaw leader but decided to try to bluff. Why you hold gun on Indian? You rob... Who are you singling, huh? Why do you think me send signals? No. Oh. It'll teach you to answer my question. Now speak up or I'll slap you with my gun. Me not talk. Why, you... Doggone it, Scar. Why'd you hit him with your fist? You knocked him out. Now he couldn't talk if he wanted to. I wish I knew who he was singling to. But take him to camp with us. And there we'll really give him a go. Ranger miles away had seen the signals of his Indian friend and immediately ridden the back trail into town. Oh, no, oh, you he went directly to the telegraph office where the wounded operator was still on duty. You back again, mister? Have the sheriff and the posse returned? Not yet. When they come, tell them the trail of Scar Grayson's gang lies south of town. You found it, eh? Otto found it. I'm riding now to join him. We'll leave clear tracks for the sheriff. I'll tell him what you said. And meanwhile, yes. uh, you'd better be plenty careful. Star Grayson's got about 30 men in his gang. I'll be careful. Now, big fella, we'll see what Tonto discovered. Easy, steady. One through there. soon reached the place from which Toto had sent smoke signals. Oh, 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 easy now. There was nothing to indicate that Toto had been captured, and the masked man wondered where his Indian friend had gone. Then he saw the dead outlaw. He examined the figure just as Toto had done, and found grim significance in the way the body lay. Mm, that must have been what Toto saw. He took a few steps around some massive boulders, and there found several sets of hoof marks. He studied these carefully for a few moments. Two men rode away. And the same two men, at least the same two horses returned, stopped here, moved around a bit, and away again. The horse went with them. Looks like Scout's hoof marks. 
Here's the list. Come here, boy. You're ready to move, big fella. Easy. I want you. The Lone Ranger had found it extremely difficult to follow the trail through the darkness. The outlaws had done their best to hide it, and the masked man had to travel very slowly. Presently, he saw the glimmer of a tiny campfire. He dismounted and, leaving Silver at ground hitch, proceeded on foot, making no more noise than a shadow. The lone ranger gave the call of a night bird. Then heard a response from the darkness. A moment later, the masked man was at the side of his Indian friend. In an instant, he had his knife ready. He glanced at the sleeping outlaws near the fire, then cut Tonto's ropes. Tonto, oh, can you walk? Uh, uh, make it. This way, Tonto, quietly. Uh, them two were sleeping camp. Leaders, gang. What about the money those cooks took out of Batesville? Did they divide it? No. Grayson, other fellow, hide gold. May not know where. They must find that stolen money and get the rest of the gang. But going back to that camp... You'll be ready to jump and bring the horses when I call you. Ah. The ranger acted on a quickly conceived plan. By the light of the low campfire, he wrote a note and left it near the sleeping Scar Grayson. Then he stepped to the side of speed. He shook the outlaw until speed opened his eyes and blinked. Before the man could speak, a well-aimed blow connected with his chin and sent him back into oblivion much deeper than before. It was a few minutes later when Scar stirred in his sleep, then wakened. Uh, well, uh, you're funny. Seemed like someone was grabbing my shoulder and shaking me. Scar sat up in his blankets and looked around. He didn't see the masked man who had quickly stepped back among the shadows. But he did see that his lieutenant's bedroll was empty. Speed. Where's Speed gone? I... What's this on the blanket? It looks like a note. Scar held the crudely lettered note close to the fire and read, I hate to do this to you, Scar, but first come, first serve. Oh, oh, that double cross of old cat. The beast stolen that money. Scar leaped to his feet and ran through the underbrush to the place where the stolen money had been hidden. Yeah, left those bags of money right here. If they're gone, I'll kill it. Yeah, <laughs> he didn't get it. Leave it right there, Grayson. Hey, what? Hey, take that gun away from him, fellow. Uh, get it. You. The engine, where'd you come from? What do you think? And you. Hey, that's a mask you wear. That's right. If you wonder about your pal, he's tied and gagged, Grayson. He's tied where you left Tonto. Then he didn't double cross No, him. I wrote that note. In the hope that you would show us where your loot was hidden. Why, you... You would like to do something about it, wouldn't you? If you weren't holding that gun on me... I, I was hoping you'd give me an invitation. I'm taking off my gun belt, Sky. Here, Tonto, pull the gun belt. I'll uh, show you! Oh, you missed. Try this. Scar Grayson was fully 25 pounds heavier than the Lone Ranger, and he was powerful. It was a fight in which no quarter was asked and none was given. The outlaw was hard and seemed impervious to the hardest of the masked man's blows. His heavy chin was like concrete. Each time the Lone Ranger's fist connected, a shock of pain ran up his arm. You started this? Yes, and I'll finish it. For a time, it looked as though the Lone Ranger would be conquered. But then his greater endurance began to tell. Scar was breathing heavily. His mouth hung open and his blows were wilder than before. As the outlaw slowed, the Lone Ranger found increasing opportunities to drive home an effective punch. One to the stomach, one to the chin, and then another to the chin that rocked Scar back on his heels. He was off balance and the next blow fell. Then, for the first time, Tonto spoke. Oh, you got him, keep us up Wait, wait. Come on, get up. I'm not through with you. No, no. Yes. Oh. Now we'll try another treatment. Grabbing Grayson by the church front, the Lone Ranger swung the outlaw so his back was propped against the tree. Open-handed slaps, Grayson. The kind of sting your cheeks. No, no. It's your turn to talk. Can you hold out as Tonto did? Or will you tell me where your gang is to meet tomorrow? I, I, I don't know. You don't? I, I don't. How long shall we play this game? Where is the meeting to be? I'll talk. Don't, don't hit me again. The meeting. Where is it? Where is your gang to meet? Uh, on the other side of the mountain. Uh, at Straw Canyon. It was 
daybreak when the Lone Ranger and Tonto came to the place where the masked man had left Dusty's body covered with a blanket. They brought with them Scar Grayson and his henchman Speed, as well as the money that had been stolen from the town. The sheriff and his posse from Batesville had reached the place just a few minutes earlier. Oh, sir. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, here's the masked man the operator told us about. Yes, the injured. Sheriff, I'm glad you're here. We have a couple of prisoners for you. Scar Grayson. Is that really you, Grayson? Who do you think it is? You look like you'd tangled with a few wildcats. We had a little discussion before we came here. Grayson told me where the rest of his gang is to meet. If you men will go to the other side of the mountain, you'll find the rest of Grayson's gang at Squaw Canyon. Maybe we'll get back the stolen money, too. Do you think so? You'll get that back right now. All in those saddlebags on Grayson's horse. Uh, we found a dead man. I see you've removed the blanket. It is one of Grayson's gang. Who shot him? It probably was Grayson himself. You got no proof of that. Oh, it doesn't matter, Grayson. You'll hang for other crimes. But I think the proof is to be found in the way your former pal pointed to your trail before he died. He's the one who told me which of the tracks leading away from this place was yours. Yes. See for yourself, men. Just before he died, that fellow scratched four letters into the dirt. He spelled out Scar. What? And died with his finger pointing in the right direction. Let's see you and Jake take care of these two crooks. Take them back to town. The rest of us will go to Squaw Canyon and corral the rest of Grayson's gang. And, uh, as for you, mister... You don't need us now, Sheriff. You can carry on from here. Oh, wait now. Tonto's had a hard time. I'm going to take him to camp and see that he rests. Let's go, Tonto. Get him up to Hey, Sheriff. That masked man didn't even ask if he was in line for a reward. Of course he didn't, Joe. He is the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger, a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.